Let's take a quick look at select and case structures. Though Python does not support this specific type of thing, but you will see these in other languages and you can use them in pseudocode. So with a select or case structure, I'm used to calling them switch statements because that's what C++ calls them. And most programming languages do have some sort of switch or select statement, though Python does not. So we're just going to spend a little bit of time here. But if you take a class with the next level with a C Sharp or Java or C++, you will see them. So with a select statement, instead of writing a bunch of if statements, we select on a variable name and we have a bunch of cases for what that variable could store. So in this case, let's say there's a main menu with option one, two, three, and four, and they can select that. It'll be stored in the menu variable. And so if they choose option one, it'll play the game. If they choose option two, it'll load the game. If they choose option three, it'll go to the help screen. And if they choose option four, it'll quit. And then we have a default case for if they enter anything else, anything that's not one, two, three, or four, and it will display invalid selection in that case. So we could also just write these as if else if statements. So for instance, this would just be if menu is one, if menu is two, if menu is three, if menu is four, or else ifs for each of these. And then the default would be like an else statement. So here's a little example. We'll ask the user for a variable A and a variable, variable B. We'll ask them to enter two numbers. We'll display a menu of one, add, two, subtract, three, multiply, and four, divide. Ask them to enter their choice, store that in the menu variable. Then we'll do a select statement on the menu. So if they choose one, add A and B together, store in a variable called result. Case two, subtract A and B, store in result. Case three, multiply A and B, store in result. In case four, divide A and B, store in result. Then after that happens, we display the result at the end. So we can use a select statement like this. This is usually how I end up using select statements is just to uh, power a menu in my program. And so we can look at what this would look like in C++ and then let's implement the same thing in Python, but without the select statements. So here's some C++ code, but don't worry if it looks really foreign. Uh, most languages, a lot of languages these days are C-like languages. C Sharp, Java, C++, these will all look kind of similar to this. But the idea is this is an output, like a print statement. This is enter two numbers. I have to declare my variable A. Again, you don't really need to understand what all this is doing, but it says display A, get the input and store it in A. Here's a menu, get the menu input. And then here we have the switch statement. And I didn't put a default. We can do a default as well. We can say invalid selection. So we're switching on the menu variable where they enter one, two, three, or four. If they choose one, we are going to just do some addition and store it in result. If they choose two, we'll do subtraction, three, multiplication, and four, division and then we display the result at the end. So if I run this program, it'll ask me for two numbers. Let's do four and five. If we do add, it'll give me a result of nine. Four plus five is nine. So we can do this for multiple things. That'll be negative one if we subtract four and five. If we do multiply, it'll be 20. Four and five will give us 0 0.8 as a result for four fifths. So that's what it would look like in C++. This is an example of a select statement. In C++, it's called a switch. And I think that's also true in Java and C Sharp. So let's look at how we would implement the same sort of thing in Python. Create a new one, do Python. I'll call this calculator. So over here is where the Python code gets displayed. Over here is our code. I don't need this part. So we'll do the same thing. Enter two numbers. 
So we'll have A is equal to input uh, A, but we want this to be a float because we're going to do math on it. Otherwise, this is a string currently. Float input A, B equals float input B. And you don't have to have all this spacing. I just like spacing these out the way that way. So then we'll display a menu. So here's the menu. One, add, two, three, and four. So two will be subtract, three will be multiply, and four will be divide. And we'll get their, their choice. So menu is equal to input. Please enter a choice. In this case, it's going to be an integer. So I'm going to surround this in int. And then we'll have to implement this switch statement, but with our if else if statement. So if menu is equal to one, we'll say result is equal to a plus b. Else if menu is equal to two, result is a minus b. Else if menu is equal to three, result is a times b. Else if menu is equal to four, result is a divided by b. Else, we'll just print invalid selection. And we will also print the result at the end. So same program, just a different language. Enter two numbers, four and five, let's add. This could be formatted a little bit better. I didn't put a, a space in there. Result is 9.0, 4 and 5, subtract, negative 1, and so on. We'll get the same values. It might have more or less zeros uh, with a decimal point, but they'll, they'll, they're the same values. So that's about it. I just wanted to highlight that these exist, and you'll see them later on but we're not really using them for now. You can kind of think of it in the pseudocode. You can write it out that way, or you could just stick to the if else if statements, but this is a somewhat common type of branching, a decision structure that lets you branch into option A, B, C, D, and so on.